Welcome back to Up in the Blue Seats, our New York Rangers podcast from the New York Post. It's time for our playoff pods. I am Brian Boyle. I am not the Rangers beat writer. That's Molly Walker from the Post. She's here and alongside the Hall of Famer, Larry Brooks. I should have read that part before I went with it. <laughs> Anyways, it's me, the great Brian Boyle. I didn't write this. Let's I'm not. Going. I'm not the Rangers beat writer. <laughs> that was good. I'm not. Nobody would want that. <laughs> and again, Larry Brooks is here. Thank you. The Rangers finished the regular season with the President's Trophy. Woohoo! I am in the, I guess, minority who does not think there's anything to be said about winning the President's Trophy. I think it's a great thing. Congrats to them. They finished with the most wins in the NHL with 55, which is the most wins in a season for the franchise, which hasn't been around that long, so not a big deal. <laughs> uh, their playoff journey begins Sunday at Madison Square Garden at 3 p.m. against the Washington Capitals. Guys, what what an, what an opening for me. Also, what an opportunity for them to start the playoffs on the right track at home in the afternoon. Hopefully it's not raining. It's getting warm. I loved walking to the garden. It was getting warm. There's so many people right out front in the Rangers garb. It was awesome. I love this time of year. I'm it's a whole so vibe. Jealous. I'm so jealous. You're right. And you're in it, though, in a different way. <laughs> yeah, I'm a pigeon. <laughs> Stop. Don't say that about yourself, Brian. Come on. No, but it's it's for a lot of reasons. This is the series that they probably if they could choose, they would want first. I think that the key here is going to be getting it done in four or five. I think that that's going to be huge. I think that that's a, an obtainable goal for this team, because I just think back to two seasons ago, going seven and seven up, up two on Tampa, and then they ran out of gas. So I'm thinking about how crucial it'll be for them to get this out of the way as early as humanly possible, just in terms of, you know, saving up strength and, and energy for, for the longevity of this playoff run. That's yeah, a grind. It, and we could never manage to do that when, when I was playing in our playoff runs, we couldn't close them out. It is imperative. And I think they're mature enough and they know that they need to focus on game one. It's cliche, whatever. Um, Charlie Lingren's a really good goalie. Oh yeah. This, this Washington team makes zero sense mm -hmm. at all. They, you know, in my opinion, it doesn't matter if I think they shouldn't be there. They're there. They earn the right to get in on the back of Charlie Lingren and some guys really picking it up and John Carlson being the glue that holds that whole 18 skaters together. Mm -hmm. They cannot look past the first shift, first period of game one. I think, I mean, it's, and then they got to reset every time. It's so, I don't know, it's cliche, but it really has to be, don't even look at the result. Just go to work and then get your next assignment. Hmm. Yeah, I, I, I agree. I, I listen, I, I think the Rangers set themselves up well, and I think they, they earned this matchup. They earned the president's trophy. What what is is really so impressive to me about their season is how they managed to handle every challenge they faced along the way, and you know some not immediately. I mean, we know that December and January were tough months, but they were but they were able to you know the the cushion they had established because they got off to such a great start allowed them to you know kind of keep their heads above the water. There, there was never a panic situation they never fell out of first place and that's to me one of one one of you know the most um compelling storyline they never fell out of first place carolina was chasing them all year they couldn't catch them and then what impressed me so much at the end of the year is you know with with about 15 18 games to go whatever it was I don't think they were really in the conversation for the president's trophy very much. I think, you know, they kind of dropped down. They were a few points behind Boston. Um, you know, Vancouver and Winnipeg were, were battling in the West. And I think it was kind of like, well, are they going to be able to hold on to first place? Mm. And, and or are they are they going to descend into this wild card mix? And then they went and Brian, you were at the game. 
They went into Boston and played almost a perfect game. And they beat the Bruins there on a Thursday night. And then they came back home and they beat Florida two nights later at the Garden. And to me, that, you know, those were the 48 hours that established them as a legitimate big time team and as a legitimate contender to win the Stanley Cup. And and I I do think they're in a in a good position. They you know, they can't look past the first shift. They can't look past the first game. But this should be a series for them where they play with authority, take care of business, and move on. Um, you know, you know, and you do look, you 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 look at past champions and how many of them are able to get through the first round in four or five games. And it sets them up. Um, you, you don't want to have to deal with the you know immediate adversity, I don't, I don't think. I don't think. And, and I, I like the I, I like this team's mindset. Um, I think it's a mature team. We know that the, the coaching staff is, you know, is dialed in. So, you know, this should be a good matchup for them. Yeah, I, I think that I worried about that lull that they went on and if they were just going to play 500 hockey for the rest of the year because, like, the team that I got traded to in Nashville, that Laviolette team in in – you know, in 20, geez, 2019, I guess. That was what happened. They started the year off, I think, with 10 or 11 wins in their first 11 or 12 games, and they kind of rode that wave to the Central. And they, we won a couple late to get us the Central, first place in the Central, and we matched up with Dallas. But it, was, uh, it wasn't right. And the fact, and I kind of kept that to myself because I, I thought it was a different team. I thought that, the goaltending could have gotten a little bit better. They could have tightened some things up, and they did that, and that is why they are where they're at. I mean, that you said it. They earned their right to play, you know, arguably maybe the 16th best team in this playoff, so that is why you try to win all the games. You should you – know, there are – I'm a believer in the hockey gods, and I think that mm -hmm. they grinded through some things. And they came out the other end better, and that's the adversity that you want during a season. You don't want it to be a breeze because it's never going to be that way in the playoffs. Other guys had some struggles. They picked it back up. You had a wire-to-wire -wire team MVP and, you know, nine out of ten other years, maybe a league MVP. And you gave opportunities to other players that got chances to show what they can do. And I look at, like, I look at Jones. I look at Schneider. I look at these guys that got elevated minutes. That's invaluable to them now because we know what the playoffs are all about. And regardless of what people think, what's happening with the league in the regular season, every single year the playoffs are the same to me. I mean, maybe a, a tick down from the mid-90s when Scott Stevens was coming across the middle, late 90s, but it's still a it's still a physical battle that gets elevated. And that is they went through things this year that they can come together and realize, hey, we can get through this, ups and downs. It starts – well, I, I, I also I, I also liked and and, and I thought, it, it, you know, you kind of can go both ways when they were forced, not only because of the uh, president's trophy and first place, but and, and seating, because no one ever talked about it in the room. It was, never came up. But, you know, that they didn't. No one. No one was. No one was welcoming a, a first round matchup against Tampa. So they had to stay in first place and they had to stay in first place ahead of Boston slash Florida. Right. So mm -hmm. they were forced to play until the last game of the season. Um, and, and even within that, they were playing all these rivalry games against teams that were either trying to get into the playoffs, Pittsburgh, the Islanders, or the devils who just wanted to beat them up you know, as, as, you know, as retribution for what had gone on in the season. So this is a team that played to game 82 and, you know, now that, and I, I think it's, it, it certainly benefits them that they were, you know, they're off from Monday to Sunday. I think, I think that's a good thing for them because they did, they never took a day off. They didn't, they, you know, and they just, just and, and, you know, they had made the playoffs months, months earlier but they were grinding, grinding every single game 
against teams that were grinding it out against them. So um, I, I think that plays into the the work ethic, the ethos of, of this team, which really, really is, is, is a hardworking team that has a lot of talent at the top. But it's it's the one to 20, I think, that has that has been most impressive about them this year. It's the synergy to some synergy. of their parts. Yeah. <laughs> synergy. Brian, I'm curious to hear. I know it's been a few seasons since you played against them, but just your perception of the Capitals team as somebody who has played against them and, and more in particular, how guys like TJ Oshie and, and Alex Ovechkin have evolved over the years into, you know, later age, if you will. Yeah. You see different things every single year as a player. And sometimes you adapt to it. Sometimes it kind of works for you, different deficiencies. Mm -hmm. You know, you see a lot more skill. I saw a lot more skill my last season playing, but I also saw a lot of deficiencies where I could use things that I learned, almost gamesmanship, like, some might call it cheating, but I, different <laughs> areas of the game where I could get an advantage because I knew these guys were skilled. I knew what they wanted to do defensively, like defensively for me and offensively. Um, I just think that Obi, Obi started skating in the second half of the year a little bit more. That's yeah. TJ Oshie has been hurt, uh, mm -hmm. but he still can shoot the puck and he is offensively gifted. He's, you know, Strom really helps a lot of the guys offensively they got a little bit of young blood coming through that can skate they can add a sort of a push to pace but they're just they're an opportunistic team yeah you know, when they lose it's sort of ugly i like their coach and what he's done you know you it doesn't really matter how it's just you get the wins they're minus 40 which is it's absurd i don't understand <laughs> them it. and the islanders have a crazy goal difference yeah it's <laughs> crazy but this guy he's got him figured out sort of you gotta i mean they're opportunistic and their goalie plays well when they have a lead they get leads and then he plays well and, and yeah the rangers had lose, a tough time pumped. against them but yeah. i can listen they're 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 not a very they're not a very good team you know they're, they're not i mean those, those teams they were not very good teams but right. they gave the rangers a lot of trouble when they played and you know you know it, it you know, talk about cliches and, you know, both teams start zero, zero. They're, they're yeah. hot. Right. Um, so I, I, what I like though, again, about the Rangers is I think they're, I think they're a mentally pretty strong team at this point. I think, I think they've gotten that from Laviolette. I think they've gone through a lot. I think um, I, I, so I, I think they are as well prepared psychologically as they are physically for this. I would be really surprised if 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 they um if they don't if they don't recognize the challenge that that they're going to be facing and they don't recognize the burden under you know that they have um that it's not that you know you lose game 1 and suddenly you're in trouble you're in you're in scramble mode they need I... to take control they need to take control of the series they do I agree. I agree that they're mentally tough. And that's why I, I disagree with your point a little bit, Brian. I do think that the president's trophy meant something to them, to this team in particular, just because especially with I mean, Mika said it a few weeks ago when they were when it was more feasible just to be gunning for the top of the Metro. Carolina has had it the last three seasons. We want it now this time. I think that those small little you know, notches on their belt, if you will, can can provide a mental confidence boost going into the playoffs, just knowing that they're coming in. They finished atop the league in every oh, possible way that they could have. Yeah, yeah, no, I, I meant uh, more so the people that think the president's trophy is a curse. That's a curse. Oh, oh, yeah. okay. I, I was yes. like, I, I love, I, I, I agree with you. That. I love no. the fact that it's like, yeah, yeah where, where, you know, what can you control right now? Uh, oh. We're the best. I didn't realize you were catering to the superstition fans. <laughs> oh, no, yeah. So like, it's, look, it's hard to win. And yeah, it's not like the president's trophy winners don't win. They do win, but there's 16 teams in the playoffs and it's, yeah. It's you know, difficult. Th things happen at the trade deadline and your divisions are different. It's not well, and it's also they control what they could. And it's also not unique to hockey that the the regular season champion does not win 
Correct. all the time. Championship, right? It happens all yeah. the time. I mean, you know, I, I actually wrote about this the other day, you know, the, the, how, how rare it is for the team to finish with the best record to win the championship, to win the World Series, to win the Super Bowl. Even in the NBA, where, you know, one or two players, you know, yeah. dominate. <laughs> Even the NBA, there, there's been a, 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 you know, a relatively low percentage of regular season champions winning the playoffs. And and I always think that there should be more of an advantage. There, you know, there should be a, a tangible advantage for winning a division, for winning a conference, for finishing on top in the league, whatever it is, whether it's an extra home game um, in, in, you know, the first two rounds or how, however long you last. I mean, you know, you know, we go through six months if season ticket holders, it, it, it dominates the conversation every day for six months. And then the regular season ends. it's kind of like, oh, well, it didn't, it didn't really matter. It's like, well, of course it mattered. I mean, and, and you know, and, well, they get so, money. You know, I, you know, I, I get, <laughs> they get a check, Larry. That's a tangible thing to some yeah, of these guys. That's tangible. <laughs> Maybe not to like Panarin, but the, the uh, VC, that's a check he wants. Like these guys mm -hmm. want that money. Yeah. yeah. So, that's but I agree with you. I mean, it's that's they want parity. So that's never going to happen. <laughs> can we go, can we go through quick? Uh, I, I had my, I mean, I just, I had a great time following this team this year as closely as I was able to. We recapped sort of their great start, a little bit of a lull. I mean, I got awards. I got a bunch of awards that I want to give up. Oh wow! All right, hand the and hand. I, the... I don't know if anyone's going to disagree with me. You should. I'm curious. Go ahead. Well, MVP's the bread man. Yeah, obviously. 100%. Your best defenseman's your best defenseman's Adam Fox. I think. Yep. I think your most improved player is Lafreniere. Mm -hmm. I think uh, your glue guy. That's my glue guy award. Is Vince Trocheck. Mm -hmm. And that could be up for debate. I think and, that's and a good that... choice. And then I think he got an you know, unsung heroes, Jonathan Quick. I think he got him a ton of wins that he had to. And I don't really, I mean, that's. I was going to say you can make him your glue guy too. Yeah. You could make him your glue guy, but he stands yeah. in the net by himself most of the time. And then yeah. when you're on the bench, you know, I can't, I'm not, listen, I've come a long way with the goalie union, but there's still goalies. <laughs> <The> goalie union. <laughs> Well, no, I think if, you, if there's any goal well, he, he could jump in that conversation. Yeah, no, you're you're right. Yeah, your 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 awards were. Yeah, I agree. I think you hit the nail on the head with all of them. Yeah, I don't know if there's any other uh, any other awards unless there's like a rookie of the year. Rookie's got it. I mean, that's a good transition. Rookie of the year. I mean, obviously, Will Cooley would be, you know, just because he's been there since day one. But it's it's difficult not to. Great. That's he a has great rookie year. For he him. really he has had a had a really great rookie year. You know, actually, I saw something. This is pretty disappointing. Um, at, for Will at least, uh, apparently because he yeah. got sat that that one game, uh, he was one game shy of of like a bonus for his for his contract and playing in every single game it's very upsetting because no. we all yeah <laughs> i'm setting for him at least i don't know but i i just found that's that criminal <laughs> are you making oh. fun of me no i, I no i had an 82 <laughs> game bonus on my entry level i got scratch game one and i was like i guess that's out the window <laughs> yeah well think about for for will it was late in the season and kind of out of left field it, it you know i i just never thought that he should have been considered in that quote-unquote rotation that that uh, yeah, we, like, yeah, Lillet we, was referring yeah. to yeah we talked about that a lot and I, I i i wrote about didn't get it that a lot it it, it was um it, yeah. it, it it didn't quite make sense to me where 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 cooley was for a maybe two or three week stretch Makes about more sense now, ago. but but you know what? I and and again, might there there might have been something that Laviolette thought, and and actually, certainly there was something that Laviolette had to have been, yeah, that he needed to get his attention, and you know from from the outside and, and from watching practice, it looked to me like everything was consistent, like there was no reason for that, but I don't think uh, like I know that the Rangers didn't scratch Cooley so they could save ninety thousand dollars yeah <laughs> we, we know do? that we know um, that what's that we know that 
Yes, we know that. <laughs> Brian's hard, like, mm. it's a hard salary cap. Um, speaking of, oh, so so, so so I, so there was something obviously that needed to be addressed. Okay, all right. Um, at at you know at that point because it was just, you know, there was a couple of weeks where it just was a little bit off. Yeah, it just seemed a little bit. And off. that new look that happens with rookies and yeah, man, that is just devastating yeah. to hear. No, it's I, I felt bad when I read that too, but um shifting gears a little bit, a another rookie that looks like he's going to be in the lineup at least based off of the first playoff practice today is is Matt Rempe. And uh we got to talk to him today and as usual he just put gave an absolute all-timer interview and he's he he's ready. He he thinks he's ready, he feels ready, he feels good about his game. And I asked him about Tom Wilson. Um and he had such a great great answer to that. He laughed immediately and and said that he had obviously watched him growing up and just showed so much respect for him absolutely absolutely gushed over tom wilson and then he ended it with yeah when i was younger there there's a a, a montage on youtube i guess of videos of wilson blowing people up one after the other he was like yeah i used to watch that to get myself fired up <laughs> well that's i wanted to get there that's the guy that can turn a series so Absolutely. they need to make sure either, depending on time and score, let them sleep or rile them up. And that's mm. going to be for the players in the room and the coaches to sort of maneuver because that's a guy that he's an X factor. And 31 other teams want that guy. Yeah. No, it's true. And it's absolutely I, true. There's no question in my mind. 31 other teams would want him. He's. I got a lot of respect for him too. He's just a... Man, he's a weapon. Yeah. So, but they don't, they're, you know, they're thin. They need to understand that you get four lines ready, the Rangers, and, and you just go to work. You could lose game one. I'm of the belief that if it doesn't work out in game one, you adjust. It's not panic mode. That That is going to be the hardest thing to do. You take the series as it comes to you, first one to four. So it doesn't matter, good or bad. It's the first one to four. And learn something each game. I would be curious. I am curious to see, just hypothetically speaking, if they do drop game one, you know, how Laviolette approaches that. Does he take well, yeah. Rem does he take Rempy out immediately? You know, what what how does he maneuver? Does he hit the panic button like immediately, switch things around or ride it for another game? I feel like it's gonna be very interesting to see how Laviolette my, navigates this. Yeah. Well, my question for Brian is like each each season is you know, is, is separate. Each team is its, is its own unit. So how, how much does past experience have past playoffs influence, a, you know, the, the, the present, like if, if you're in 2014, all right. Mm -hmm. And you're going through, you know, the series against the Flyers, do you relate back to how you came back? the year before, or is that not relevant at all because it's a different team? Well, as an individual, you have to try to, and I think it's, it's pretty much final buzzer to puck drop. That's when as an individual player and the team, we all talk and the adjustments here and there, but you have to start either preparing, you think back on those moments. I would think back on games that, like my first year in the playoffs, I didn't have a point in five games, but that was the most fun hockey. And I honestly thought I played maybe my best hockey ever <clears throat> in those five games against Washington. I couldn't score a goal. I had 25 shots on net in five games. I don't know what was going on. Tort said, you are one of our best players. No offense. That can't happen if we want to get where we want to go. To. <laughs> well, thanks. I think it was a great job. See you next year. I was like, okay. Okay. The next year, you know, puck did go in the net in game one and then it, things were going great. And then I was, my mindset was the same as it was the year before scored a few goals, a little bit of charades happened in the first season, first series against Ottawa. And I kind of let it slip my mindset going in. I tried to downplay everything. And that's what usually helped me when it was a big moment, the crowd's going nuts. The anthem's really loud. And I'm just trying to breathe through it. And then I kind of started getting excited. They're yelling on the bench. I had six guys from Ottawa trying to get at me. Hmm. And then I got knocked out cold, but <laughs> uh, from a from a vicious hit. 
that would be suspendable now, but it was, you know, and I tried to get it back and I was just injured, but other playoff rounds, I just, I took a little piece every time and I tried to focus on the positive. It's like, well, what, what did go wrong? We learned from that. The coach addresses that. And then I would have to look inward. You'd have to do that as a player. What, what, Mm -hmm. what went wrong? And when it went wrong, how can I adjust? How can I fix it as fast as possible? So they go down two nothing. The I don't think they will. They come out like crazy at home. Game one, like they when we played them the first ten minutes, Pittsburgh versus New York in twenty two. I said like to myself, I go, this team is going to go sixteen and zero win Stanley Cup. That was the best hockey team for ten minutes I've ever seen in my life. And then obviously it's hard to sustain that. We kind of clawed our way back. And then for the next like 300 minutes, we were the better team, but they won the series. Yeah. They, they can do that. They're going to come out hard. I like the adversity for that group. Cause I want to see what they've learned and it's going to come. It's going to come in the first round a little bit. It might not be a ton of it. It might not be backs against the wall sort of thing, but things are going to come at them where they're going to have to make a decision. Which way are we going to go with this? Are we going to doubt or are we going to, reassess it and just go back after it and it's it's hard to really explain it because so many different things could happen but that's really what happens it's gonna you're gonna get a bad call you're gonna get a puck go in off some someone on your team how do you flush it and just get back up drop the puck and go again i had the same thought after the first couple games of the devil series too just with how intense they were i thought it was i thought it was over before oh my god it's It's like it it was it, it was pure dominance. Like there's just no other way to describe it except for pure dominance. And I think that we've seen this from this. So I've seen that from this Rangers team for a few years now, but like you said, it, it's really difficult to sustain. But to that point, I do think that they are more prepared this year because they've been operating at this level in practice in general from the beginning of the season. Bingo. Yeah. The whole I mean, we had a, a Mark Canizero joined us uh, at practice today. He's coming on uh, for the playoff run. And he obviously, this is this is the first time I'm seeing Rangers practice in comparison to what it was last season. And he was stunned. He was like, this is fun. Look at them. They're so, you know, interested, so engaged. Everything is intense. Everything is with pace, with tempo, competition at the root of it. LaViolette has been shaping this team's mindset since day one that he walked into the room. And I think that that is something that this team needed to strengthen. The mental strength needed to be a little bit better. And that's what I think he has brought if, if, you know, along with a lot of other things, but at the top of the list, I think that that's, what's going to serve them well in the playoffs. And he said it to us day one, you know, playoff intensity is not something you can just, flip a switch it's something that has to become part of your dna part of your day-to-day lifestyle and that's how you channel it every single day when you're in the thick of it and that's why i think that the rangers are are in better shape going into this into this playoff run i think it's reps yeah how how do you how do you practice reps physicality and and intensity and practice these are these are why great players are consistent. This is how they bring themselves to work every single day. It's mm. uh, there's an inner drive that we all wish we had as much of. And a lot of mine was based on survival in the league. Mm-hmm. These guys have that same sort of mindset and they're the best at what they do. If you can get a team to buy in and do that, <clears throat> that's why you have the you know, people talk about leadership. It's like get in line or get out of here. And that's, you know, the Crosby's of the world and, mm. You know, McKinnon's these guys that are just they, we're here to win and that's it. And you know, a Tuesday in October for 45 minutes is important. So it's it's the most important thing you're gonna do right now. So get get it done. And that's I think, you know, from what you guys are at practice every day. I'm not. But that's a great thing to hear as you know, as a fan of the team. Yeah. I, I also just think it's so it's so interesting to see the public perception of this Rangers team and Larry and I have talked about it. It it almost just feels like, you know, because of how gravely disappointed everybody was with last season's run, it's almost like everybody is not allowing themselves to get excited for this one just because feeling burned in the past. But the perception is almost like 
it's it's anxiety. It's not so much it's not so much excitement, which you would think it would be over the president's trophy winners, but there's just almost this like intensity, just it, t tense to see what's going to happen, see how they come out in game one, how they start and all that kind of stuff, just because of of the route that they've taken to get to this point in time. <laughs> well, they're better in goal. They're better on D. They have more depth up front. They have a better game breaker than Washington has. They have, you know, I, I just like, they check every box. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I, I would say, I would say five. I would say four, but that's hard. I'll say five. Yeah. I, I was going to go with five too for, for my, for my matchups that'll be coming yeah. out on yeah. game one. <laughs> I, I, I think when you, when you're in a one eight, you, you need it to be five. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you really, you need it to be five. You, that you, that you, extra trip down for game extra. six is not. I know it's just a wash. Yeah, but Dulles, like you got it's a far drive. Nothing, no, Excel, nothing, Excel, Excel. Nothing, doing that. Nothing good ever happens by playing extra games. Nothing. You know, there's nothing. Nothing beneficial can ever result for by playing an extra game. If you want to win, yeah, no, for sure not. That's uh. That's awesome. I, I'm just, oh, guys, guys, it's here. <laughs> it's here. No, it's it's exciting. It really, it kind of felt like last year, I don't know, it, it really does feel different. It feels like last year it was, I don't know, I can't even, I can't even put it into words, but it just feels like they've had such tunnel vision to this point this season, but not in the sense, I felt, it felt like last season they were really, they were just looking ahead. Like it was so difficult for them. To, was, right, Larry? You know, you know like, what last year? Yeah. Last like, year, I, I remember last year thinking that this was really, if not the first team I ever covered, one of, one of the only teams I ever covered that just kept talking about they couldn't wait to get to the playoffs. They yeah. Yeah. And it's like teams don't generally do that. Yeah. You know, you, 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 even, you know, even if in the back of your mind, you're, you're looking ahead. As, as you know, not very as, open about it looking at the next shift and it was just kind of like they it, it almost was like you know that they they felt that it was you know they shouldn't have had to have gone through the entire <laughs> yeah process, you know, yeah to get back I, honestly it was it was uh, it was strange and then they they made the you know they made the moves everyone was excited um it was just it was and, just and honestly the first two games yeah, New Jersey put up no opposition. Nothing. All they needed to do was was come out and play hard in in Game Three. That's all mm -hmm. they needed to do was take care of business in Game Three, and they would have moved on. But they couldn't do it. And yeah, um, no. yeah I, I the, the the atmosphere, the environment is is completely. It really is. Um, it it almost feels it, like that, it, and it has been all year. It, it, right, it, honestly, exactly. It, it has been all year. It's. Um, they, there was very little talk this year and about what had gone wrong last year. There was, it was very, you know, it was, they were in the moment all year. Yeah. They were from, from the start. They, you know, they, they were in the moment. They didn't talk about, well, last year we did this and it didn't work out and we need to correct this. It's like, they are just, fo they were focused on the 45 minutes mm -hmm. Tuesday in October a Thursday in February, mm -hmm. you know, it was the same. And um, I, I do, I, I, I like their, I like their mindset. Again, they have to play, you have to play the games. And, um, um, but, but I think they're set up well. Go yeah. Ahead. It feels like they've embraced the day to day of this season. Like they've embraced every step that they've taken through it. They've embraced, they embraced December and January, you know, like no, nobody, what, there was no frustration. There was no getting down. It was, this is part of the season. This is just a natural side effect that every team goes through at, at one point in the season. And, and it just felt like even the last few games when they weren't playing the best, but it, it didn't feel like they were looking ahead to the playoffs. That was also, it was interesting in that Laviolette's message to us was consistent from day one to mm -hmm. today. It never changed. No. It, 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 in, when they were going through issues with their power play, he would just say, listen, there are going to be issues 
in in this area this week and then we'll take care of them and there'll be something else pop up in next week and and so every issue that came up he addressed it the same way yep you know there there was there was never you know there was never a surprise you know he he was always in character and mm -hmm. and i you know i'm 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 fairly confident that that's the way he is with the players that he is the same you know in september as he is in march mm -hmm. and yep. he has the same you know he he you know, he's, he's um um as as even keeled a, a, a coach that i can remember dealing with now now i dealt you know with al arbor but it was so long ago <laughs> um that i covered al um but he you know he had the same kind of approach that you know you couldn't tell whether it was october and they were playing well or it was march and they were in a slump you know you couldn't tell because the message was always the same. We're on to Cincinnati. Sorry, all the uh, non-Patriots fans that are listening. <laughs> That's what it has to be. It has to be that way when you're up two. Game three is big. Mm. It's not going to be easy, so don't try and make it easy. You can't think ahead like, oh, maybe I don't finish this hit because we got three more rounds. You got to get it done first. I had one question. Oh, well, I will say one thing. It's nice that Lavi knows this team that he's playing. That's always a positive. <clears throat> Nothing negative about that. No. Um, what's going on with Heedle? Mm. He's he's a full participant. He was on the ice today. He was. You know, he's been That's on the fine. ice with them. Yeah, he's been on the ice. Oh, they literally. It was out of nowhere. Yeah. It really was out of nowhere. You know, we were told before we went in. He's you know he's out there. He's medically cleared, and. And and that's where they're at. You know, still no timeline. They're not going to. And Laviolette forewarned us today that there will be no personal personnel lineup changes revealed to us whatsoever. He <sighs> declined. He declined to to comment on Heedle's availability for game one. So I think that we are not we're not going to know. I mean, it depends because even today he was they did their line rushes and whatnot. But a lot of the forwards were were rotating, and he did take a few reps in the lineup. He took was one he on uh, power play two on point practice no. as well. And no, no, he was no. not. No, never. He he took one. He took one rep with Kreider and Zabanajad, um, which caught my attention. It was one one that I saw. Um, but he was he was you know. He, rotating in he's he's starting to right. to get more reps it, but yeah. we're not gonna know the, the answer is in. yeah, yeah the answer we're not gonna know really, until warm-ups <laughs> really don't know whether he is an option for the playoffs I, mean, I tend to think he is or why else is he skating yeah i don't think it's simply well phil wants to skate yeah not at this point yeah I, I don't think i don't think it's uh, all right let's let's let phil come on um but he hasn't played since november um yeah are I, you just gonna throw i, I don't in know there? i I, on a, I, yeah. don't, I don't know <laughs> you know it, it was just shocking all of a sudden yeah. he's so and he's not even out there in a red jersey he's 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 you know, full he's, participant he's in the battle drills he's, yeah he's in the, so is is he an alternative i don't know um well, prime obviously, Phil Heedle. Well, obviously, the longer well. they play them, the, you know, the better, you know, the, the more chances. Better, yeah. Better chance. But... It's difficult, though. It's it's like, you know, let's just say, hypothetically speaking, they steamroll Washington four straight, whatever. And they that would be great for him, too, just because extra practice days and yeah. things like that. But, you know, if you do that well in the first round, do you throw Heedle in there into the mix and see if it could be better? Or is that going to, you know, ruin? ruin whatever they've got going after the first round. And these are the decisions that Laviolette's going to have to make. But I just, I think it's, I, I wonder, I wonder if he thinks that that's a, that that's a, a good idea or if he's nervous about doing that and whatnot. That's a, there's a couple of places I'd put him, and they yeah. vary at home and, and on the road. It could, again, who knows if he's <laughs> even available. An option. Yeah. Right. I mean, who knows? Yeah, but I, but I, if I'm it's 80% really, Phil Heedle in that lineup, that can get up to 100% Phil Heedle in that lineup. Matchup yeah. nightmare for Spencer yeah. Carberry. Mm -hmm. uh, something to be, I don't know, watched, I guess. It'll Definitely. be interesting to see. I don't know. No. You, know you know what I remember, and, and this was kind of, this was somewhat similar, but um, 
Remember in the 2004 playoffs when the, the Devils were playing the, the Flyers, and that was the year that Scott Stevens was concussed the middle of the season. Mm -hmm. And he he didn't come, you know, he didn't play the second half of the season. And they're playing Philly in the first round, and all of you know, all the focus is on is Scott Stevens coming back. Is Scott Stevens coming back. And you know, and it was a Lou team. Um, so <laughs> you know, nothing. But there there were reports of Scott Stevens skating at South Mountain Arena at 5 a.m. You know, and, and and we actually had we sent people to the rink like at no. 7 oh my god to see and and obviously Stevens didn't play but um but I, I that, that was the background of that entire the, the Devils lost in five um that that series but that was the background you know, is Scott Stevens gonna play is Scott mm -hmm. Stevens Scott Stevens gonna, gonna be the same now. thing with Hedl. Yeah, now Phil Hedl's not quite Scott yeah. Stevens, <laughs> but especially if you're a forward on the other team. Yeah, especially. Yeah. Oh, awesome. Um, all right. I think that was a good chop up for the preview. We're back at it again. Uh, Jake, are we going Sunday night? So we'll have something Monday for the people, or after game two? After game two. After game two, we'll have another something something for uh. For the fans. Hmm. Oh, you wrote that to me. Cool. Uh, awesome. All right. Well, Larry, thanks again for your time. All right. Appreciate All right. it. As always, right. that was a lot of fun. Oh. Uh, we'll I chat with you following game two of the series next week. How come? All right, buddy. What's that? It's screaming. It's screaming. Okay. Well, bye. Nice to see you. <laughs> All right. Bye. <laughs> see, ya. see ya. Okay. Welcome to the boiler room. I'll bring you nice inside my bedroom basement here because I had to put this in because I kept having. With too many kids. Anyways, I digress. I a great memory. I think it's topical for this. Uh, we had, we seem to have a lot of series against Washington, but we had the one, and a lot of fans are going to remember Derek Stepan game seven. I wasn't on that team. The one I loved was a couple of years prior. The year escapes me right now, but we had a triple overtime game in Washington. And in the first overtime, I was in front of that, and Mike Rupp shot a puck right off my butt, and it should have been a goal. We should have been out of there. Very disappointing. But towards the end of the third overtime, Marion Gabrick, heroics. We ended up winning that series. I think Ryan McDonough played close to an hour of ice hockey, and I'll never forget that. That was one of the greatest, most exhausting wins ever, and it's good vibes going into this series with Washington Capitals. And that will put a wrap on episode 153 of Up in the Blue Seats, our Rangers podcast from the New York Post. Time to give out stars, but we're going to kind of rewind back to what we had said about season awards. So, Molly, mm -hmm. MVP? Artemi Panarin, obviously. I think your best defenseman is your best defenseman, Adam Fox. Mm -hmm. We had a breakout player of the year, Molly. Alexi Lafreniere. Oh, yeah. Was it ever? Hell of a year. <laughs> Was it ever? Was it ever? I got your unsung hero is Jonathan Quick. And Jonathan Quick so is huge. definitely up there. Yep. Unbelievable. They don't win a presence throw, obviously. They might have been fighting for a playoff spot without his heroics throughout the season. And we got my glue guy, your glue guy, everybody's glue <laughs> guy. Who is it, Molly? Do you remember? John oh, who? Vincent oh, Trocek. Yeah. Larry Vincent Trocek. Us. Yes, he did. Um, yeah, I even Vincent Trocek could even be unsung too, honestly. For sure. An honorable mention to Chris Kreider. Score one more goal, bud. 40. Come on. <laughs> uh, it was a great season. It was so much fun. And now the real season starts. So thanks to Jake Brown for producing the show along with Thomas Hogan. You can catch up on all episodes of the podcast by subscribing to Up in the Blue Seats on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you get your podcasts. You can also watch us on the New York Post Sports YouTube page. Subscribe there. Give us a thumbs up below on YouTube. And comment below. What are your predictions for the Rangers series with the Capitals? I got them in five. You can also follow us on Twitter at Molly Walker. That's two E's and two R's and at Brybrows22. For Larry Brooks and Molly Walker, I'm Brian Boyle. Thanks for listening and watching Up in the Blue Seats. Talk to you guys next week following game two of the first round.
Woohoo!